And hello, this is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor, and I'm doing my podcast late in the afternoon, about 4.30 in the afternoon. I just was too busy this morning to get up and do a podcast, so I'm doing it late in the afternoon. Well, I tell you, we hear all these remarks from the president and everybody, oh, the economy's good, the economy's good. I want you to know that if you're not looking for the red flags in this economy, you're going to miss a lot and you're going to be surprised when things happen to you, when you lose your job because the company is laying you off. I'm going to give you a good example. And this this story kind of gets into a bigger story because it involves the automotive industry. So we got a headline today, and it, and it reads like this. Everyone is in complete shock. A 500-person Tesla team found out in the middle of the night their Charger Division jobs, they were laid off. 500 people in that division were laid off in one night. And that's pretty much the whole, the whole team. So, and that leads to the bigger problem because Ford and GM and everybody else who is making a electric vehicle out there and who needs these charger stations, now what's going to happen? Can Tesla do it with a smaller staff? Maybe they can. But there's a lot of Tesla stations or charging stations, I should say, that needs to be built because we have nothing. That's why I haven't, I won't buy an electric vehicle vehicle at the moment because one, they're too expensive and the other thing is that they don't have enough charging stations to go on a trip. And I'm not going to have a car to gather around the town and another car to go on long trips. I'm just not going to do that. That's an expense I cannot afford. Tesla has received more than $17 million in federal grants to develop its charging network and now they're laying everybody off. Which kind of tells you because their sales are down, demand for electric vehicles in every automobile and uh, manufacturer, I should say, they just can't sell. If you look at the inventory that's sitting out there in electric cars that have not been sold, it's mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. So we have an issue where people are shocked that they've lost their jobs. And I don't want you to be shocked, and I want you to plan for it, okay? The other issue is at McDonald's. Now, I put out a statement yesterday that I was not going to eat at any more fast food. I can't afford, I can't afford an $18 fast food hamburger. I just can't do it. It's not good business sense to me. It's not good stewardship of my money. McDonald's earnings miss estimates as dinner, diners, I mean, pull back. And I guess, and I didn't know if this was happening, there's a Middle East boycott on McDonald's, and that hit sales. So we, so we have a, we. That's another red flag. So here's, here's another red flag. Home prices soar even higher in February, despite higher rates. Why is that happening? Not quite sure. The other issue is that, and I found this other article, and now I can't find it. But it said that Starbucks earnings are not are are missing the missing the uh, the mark because everybody has pulled back on their spending. No one wants to spend nine dollars for a cup of coffee anymore. When you can make it perfectly at home, listen. If you guys need to know how to make a cup of coffee and grind the beans and choose the beans and roast it and and put it into a French press and drink it, I'll teach you. Just let me know. I, I'm at $175 per hour as consulting fees, and I will teach you. <laughs> but I'm not going to spend $9 to go out there and buy coffee. I'm just not going to do it. So we have earnings off McDonald's because consumers are not spending money on food. The other issue is, I saw this. And I can't find this story at the moment as I'm going through my content listing. But what it said is that in in home prices have gone up so much in Florida 
that now they're expecting a bubble and it's going to hit the real estate market in Florida. Will it happen? I have no idea. We just saw in that one report that real estate prices have gained. They've soared. And that is one of the problems that has hit Florida. And I know this for a fact because during the pandemic, I was I had a three-bedroom condominium there. And I was renting it. At that time when I moved there, moved from California to there to save money, during the pandemic, a bunch of New Yorkers decided they wanted to get out of New York, out of Wall Street, and come down to Palm Beach. Well, that increased my rent from eighteen fifty a month to three thousand four hundred dollars a month. It boomed. People started moving out of Florida because they just could not afford living there anymore. Drive up to South Carolina, you can live there very, very well. Still can. By the way, South Carolina is a great state. I just wish I wasn't here in Los Angeles at the moment and working on client stuff, but I have to be here. And it is expensive. I filled up my car today. I spent $5.54 on gas per gallon. In some parts of the city, if you get over closer to Beverly Hills and on the west side of Los Angeles, you will pay up to $7, $7 per gallon. So what my whole focus on this podcast is, you have to make sure that you see all the red flags. Now, Today, the feds came out and said they were not going to raise rates, nor were they going to lower them at the moment. So all of a sudden, you have all these people coming out and and giving their opinion of what's going to happen and what people are going to do and what the Fed chair is going to do. I mean, they they come out. Once, Once something is said out of the Fed, all of the experts, who I'm beginning to wonder if they are, come out and they begin chit chatting with all of the media people. This is what I think. The Fed does not have any choice at the moment but to keep the rates at its level because inflation has not been tamed. And we keep seeing it going up each month by a little bit, but it's going up. Food prices are going up. Gasoline is going up. Home prices and rent has gone up. So it's very difficult to afford things. And and me, personally, I'm not eating out anymore because I can do it at home cheaper. But the feds have no choice at the moment but to keep it. My gut feeling that around when May, June, July, we may see a slight increase from the feds. I'm giving my own opinion here. And you can take it and do whatever you want with it. But I feel that they're going to have to raise it slightly. Because we're not going to see inflation come down. We're going to continue to see a slight increase month after month. And that is a concern to me. That is a red flag that we should be looking for. So when you're looking at the news, or when you're listening to the news, that's probably our biggest problem, is that when we're listening to the news on all the mainstream media, we are getting a whole bunch of opinions. What I would suggest, look for the red flags. Look for, a a good example, Yellen, Secretary of the Treasury Yellen, was criticizing her predecessor, whose last name is Summers, on inflation. Her remark was, because he's touting that inflation is not in the control and that the feds need to do maybe something else. So she says, well, he's been wrong in the past. Well, i got to tell you this. Madam Secretary, you have been wrong on the economy from day one. Every single thing that you've done in the Biden administration has been wrong. 
Every statement that you have put out saying how great the economy is has been wrong. So don't put down Summers since all that you have done has been wrong. Now, she won't admit it. No, no, no. She won't admit it because she's a politician. That is a red flag. When the government will not admit and say, hey, we have got a problem, and we need to fix it. But you don't hear anything coming out except for more taxes from the White House or from the President or from Yellen. And Yellen wanted to have those international taxes so that if you did business or any place else in the, in the world, that you would be taxed on. She is, She was not good as a Fed chair, and she has not been good as a secretary, secretary of the treasury. Red flag. So in this economic climate that we have currently, where you are in uncertain of what's going to happen, I'm uncertain of what's going to happen, let's just watch the red flags, know that there's a problem out there. I saw a member of Congress today in a committee saying, we have a problem. This was a Democrat. And I've been talking about this for ages now. The Democrat says, we have a problem. We have all of these billions of dollars of commercial loans that are coming up for renewal, and no one's going to be able to renew them. That is going to put the banks in a severe situation. And she's actually at, 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 she is right. I've been saying this for so long. I said, we have got to ask the question, how safe is our banks? Because the banks cannot take a hit, a great hit as they're taking right now, on automobiles that they're having to repossess. They cannot take a hit of billions of dollars on on commercial loans that need refunding, but they can't fund them. And the, if the banks do it, what does that do? That's going to, I mean, not the banks, but if the feds do it, if they cover these loan losses, what's going to happen? Inflation goes up again. Every time that government plays a part in 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 business they create inflation that's the problem when we have an out of control government that does not watch what they're spending and they don't care about it because they are more concerned about the political power that they have than what or than what their decisions and how it's affecting the american population Watch for the red flags and just plan around it. That's my dog. My dog just ate. And every time he eats, he's an old dog. He's 16 years old. He has to make all of these old people sounds. Hacking and coughing and everything else. So my end of my podcast is... Watch for the red flags. This is Mike Lodge. I am the business advisor. Talk with you soon. God bless and bye-bye.